In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the oldest and dearest pistol that I own from the world's oldest firearms manufacturer. I'm talking about this Beretta 950 Minx chambered in 22 short. This was my daddy's pistol. It's 67 years old. We're gonna take this thing to the range and talk a little bit about it coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me for, like I said, today's nostalgic look back at this 67-year-old Beretta 950 Minx, chambered in 22 short. This was my daddy's pistol. We're gonna take it to the range, take a look at the details and what I think is so cool about it, and I'll tell you the story of how I think this came to be my daddy's pistol. But first, in a twist of sponsorship irony, a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Hog Holsters. Hog Holsters are made in the USA and Arizona, and they are without a doubt the most comfortable concealable holster I've ever tested. You can save 10% on your order at Hog Holsters by using the coupon code Survival on Purpose, all one word. That's hogholsters.com. Thanks to Hog Holsters for sponsoring today's video. Okay, you may or may not get the irony in that, but some people will. So anyway, without any further ado, let me take you down to the old tabletop. We'll sh I'll show you how this thing works, some of the details of it. I'll tell you the, the story of how I think my daddy came to get this pistol, and then we'll get to the range and get to doing some of that bang bang stuff. Y'all too? Okay, here's the Beretta 950, chambered in 22 short. I think they called this the Minx version. This thing was also available in 25 caliber. This was introduced by Beretta in 1952. This one was made in 1957, according to Beretta, who I had to call to find out. And just a little, little fun fact, Beretta introduced their first product in 1526. It was a barrel for an arquebus rifle, so that's pretty cool. So like I said, this was my daddy's pistol, and so 67 years old. Just show you how the pistol works, and I'll tell you a little story of how I think he got it. So magazine release is down here on the bottom of the, of the, of the grip. Six round magazine, holds six of these. Tremendously powerful 22 caliber short pit rounds. And just as a comparison, there's a 22 short versus a 22 long rifle. Although I do think the 22 short has a history of being one of the first, if not the first, smokeless cartridge introduced. Uh, certainly the first rimfire. So that being said, uh, the magazine's out. This thing has a tip up barrel. I'm trying to do this backwards left handed on camera. So you can load around like that, which is pretty cool. You can fill the magazine up, stick it in there. Load one in the round, put your barrel down. You don't have to lower the hammer on a live round. You don't have to do any kind of manipulation, so it's pretty safe. It has an inertial firing pin. They say that, at least Wikipedia says that Beretta said that that, that was the safest way to carry it. It's with the hammer all the way down. It's got a little half cock, but according to the what I, what I learned or researched, that that's not the safe way to carry it. It could, it could fail. So they, they recommend carrying it with a hammer down so the inertia firing pin won't hit it. I don't know if it's drop safe or not. I wouldn't trust it you know, because you got an inertia firing pin. If it dropped on the barrel like that, it might go bang. That being said, um, it has some, some knurling right here, serrations on the, on the back of the slide, so you can rack it if you need to. There's some serrations on the hammer with a little hole in the hammer and uh, just a little thin metal trigger guard. And then the uh, trigger smooth, curved, and single action. It's a blowback design, um, tip up barrel, like I said. This thing is, is really, the uh, design of this thing is to be a really concealable pistol. And it is, it's four and a half inches long this way, three and a half inches this way, uh, about one inch thick at the widest point, and it weighs 11.2 ounces with seven rounds of ammo in it. One thing I, th I like about it, it's really easy to take down for cleaning and lubrication, just pop the barrel up, make sure the mag's out, so, so it's, you know it's not loaded. It's, you can always tell it's, it's really easy if it's loaded or not by tipping that up. You want to tip the barrel all the way over and just pull your slide back just a little bit, lift up the top, and just slide it right off. There's just two little tabs back here. I don't know if you can see those or not on the camera, but those are what fit the uh, slide, the groove in the slide rides on those two tabs. So you clean it like that. If you see this little thing here, that is your ejector. There's no extractor on here. So as the blowback cycles the slide, the cartridge ejects from the pressure and 
hits this little ejector, not extractor, ejector, and flips up and back. So this thing ejects actually out and up instead of to the side. Put it back in. You just take your, you got your two little tabs back here. You start your slide groove under it. Get it just enough to where it's lined up with the front and just uh, snap it down again. Close your barrel. And then always, always do a function check. And the trigger on this thing is really not too bad. I don't want to do a dry fire because it is a rim fire. I don't want to ding up the barrel any more than it probably already is. The frame, by the way, is anodized aluminum or some kind of aluminum. You can see it's got some wear on it. And the uh, slide and barrel are steel. So that's everything I can think of to tell you about this pistol other than I think my daddy got it while you're just looking at maybe some close-ups. Uh, he was going to work for the Atlanta Police Department as a photographer. And uh, one of the detectives or policemen he was working with asked him if he had a pistol. And he said, no, I don't have a pistol. He said, well, you need a pistol, son. So he took him down to the store and bought him this 22 pistol. I think that's how he got it. I've heard that story over and over about a pistol. I didn't hear it about this specific pistol, but made in 1957. So that seems like about the right time frame. But either way, I know for sure it was my daddy's pistol. And I know for sure it's made in 1957. Okay, so I Took this cute little pistol to the range. I had a few handful of the leftover old rounds that were loose in the box, and I also took some new CCI 22 shorts. Started with the old rounds, and out of that six rounds of the old, I wound up with three that actually went bang, and three that had definitely firing pin strikes, but no bang. And if, as you look at the target, you can see that the uh, group on those three was less than wonderful. So I loaded up some new ammo and first round failure to feed, but it did better. And then I aimed at the head of the target on that one. As you can see there, not too great. So I loaded another full mag plus one in the pipe of seven and fired at the top portion of the head just to kind of give me a, a, a different place to aim and had a little bit better group on that. So that was the first range trip. I brought it home, I took it apart and cleaned it as, as absolutely good as I could um, and oiled it really well. Took it back to the range. And this thing bit me. You can see if I'm if I'm gripping it right here, you can see it's got a little bit of a little bit of meat hanging up there. And I was gripping this thing like I would you know, a Glock 19, and man, still got a scab there. It bit me pretty good. The uh, first target, though, I had six shots in the A zone and one in the clavicle at 15 feet, so better than the first time. We took another magazine full, six rounds in the mag at 15 feet with an empty chamber, racked the slide, and it failure to feed twice in a row. And then I got a stovepipe out of it, but all the rounds wound up in the A zone. So not too bad as far as accuracy. And then, and still at 25 feet, this one was already there. They're still all in the circle there. So then I decided, let's just get crazy. I took it to 50 feet, slow fire, really trying to be careful with it. And I had a misfire, followed by a stovepipe, but then a tap rack worked. Only two of them out of those six were in the A box, the box, the heart box at 50 feet, but all six were in the body. But two of them did actually get in, in the uh, A zone, heart zone there. So that was it. By now my hand was bleeding pretty good, so I decided we'll pack this one up. But it actually um, surprisingly did pretty stinking well. Um, it, it's really kind of fun to shoot. Um, once I've figured out that you don't have to grip the heck out of it because it doesn't really have much recoil, I didn't bite myself anymore. And I was, I was really happy with the accuracy of this little thing for what it is. Shugnar sleeps with a pillow under his gun. Let's see if we can wrap this up now. Uh, kind of pros and cons that I come away from the range with. So first of all, let's talk about the pros. And for me, my number one pro is this was my daddy's pistol. So uh, it has more sentimental value to me than, than 
functional value or monetary value. But uh, I think that's, that, that's my number one. Number two, it's pretty easy to shoot. It's just a very low powered round, so it's easy to shoot. Fairly accurate for what it is. I really like the tip up barrel. It uh, makes it easy to load, easy to take down a whole nine yards. And it's got a pretty decent trigger in it. And finally, for, for the last pro, it's just really cool, don't you think? Now for the cons, as far as cons go, first of all, it is a very, very, very low powered round. I was certainly not gonna be in my top 10 choices for self-defense with a 22 short, but at average self-defense ranges, uh, you could put a few rounds in somebody's face with one of these and it would probably uh, cause them to maybe not feel feel like continuing in their in their endeavors. One of the other cons for me is you gotta really be careful when you're shooting this thing, hold it not too tight because if you hold it too tight, it will bite. And then finally, uh, for me, especially with these, these progressive lenses that I wear, the sights just don't cut it. For me to, to really focus, I have to kick back and be looking through the bottom of my lenses like this. Don't worry, it's not loaded, I'm not gonna shoot you. Uh, so when I'm, when I'm doing normally, everything's kind of a blur. I wind up just using the uh, top of the little hump here with a, with a slide groove, in, a sight groove in it, just kind of to, to sight along that, almost like a shotgun. So. Again, at close range, that's not that big a deal, but it's just um, certainly, this is what this pistol is designed for. This is not a target pistol, so I get it. If you have any other information that I didn't share about this particular 950 model pistol, I'd be interested in hearing it in the comments below because I'm trying to learn all I can about this thing because I think it's pretty cool and it was my daddy's pistol, so I really appreciate it if you would share that information if you have it. And as always, I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.